thank you very much today for joining us. Um, could you first of all describe your personal background and your role and expertise that you're bringing to NatWest in the field of corporate payments? Okay, fantastic. Yes, well, uh, my name is Jessica Richards. I'm the head of market development for payments. My role covers really four areas. So strategy for payments and then regulatory industry and external engagement. So my team deals with the regulator, uh, industry, the likes of uh, the Payments Association, as well as conferences, events and, and, and other uh, external um, bodies. Uh, in terms of uh, my background, I've spent uh, 25 years in the city in financial services. Actually, the last I was in investment banking for quite a while at Morgan Stanley. Uh, but the last 10 years I have spent at the heart of the payments industry. I was at Payments UK that then evolved into to UK finance. Uh, I was a director at, at both of those and I led the uh, industry board, industry strategy and, and also sat on a number of um, industry for on behalf of uh, of the UK so for example at the European Payments Council I sat on the board there for the UK so that's uh that's my history and my love of payments <laughs> <laughs> um so looking at what Matt West is doing on its overview of corporate payments right now what do you see as the key uh, trends and topics that you're you're keeping an eye on at the moment yeah, so so just in terms of NatWest, I uh, I can just give you a little snippet of uh, uh, just to give a flavour of what we do, and then I, I'm happy to talk about the trends. But NatWest uh, payments really sits uh, at the heart of every customer relationship for NatWest, and we uh, at NatWest we we bank. Um, 750 government agencies. We're the number one corporate bank. We have 17 million retail customers. And overall, we do one in four payments in the UK. So we we do, um, uh, we believe we are a, a leading player <laughs> in, the, in, in the market. We're also innovative and I can come back to, you, you mentioned sort of some of the things we're doing. We were the first, um, first bank to do an open banking solution and I can talk about pay it. Uh, which is very innovative. And I think that those are those are examples of some of the things that, that we're seeing in terms of the proposition we're offering to the corporate space. Uh, and then I think the other thing to, to note probably is that we also play a leading role in the industry space. So it's not just in the competitive space where, where, we, where we're a leader, but also the industry space. So Marion chairs the, the Payments Association Advisory Board. We also sit on many senior boards in, uh, in the UK and, and also Europe. So we're, we, we believe we're a big player. In terms of trends, I mean, I could talk for a long time about this. So <laughs> I will, uh, but I will try and, um, uh, I've tried to actually, I've made a couple of notes because I've tried to hone it down to a few different, there are a few themes. So uh, if we start with the drivers, uh, I always see the drivers as uh, threefold. So there's the customer drivers, there's the drivers that are coming from uh, in terms of industry and regulation, and then the, the drivers in the competitive space often driven by technology, and certainly in recent years. If, if we take each of those in turn, so the customer, I mean, I think you, you have to, and everybody has seen the biggest trend because of COVID is, has been this shift from physical to digital. Uh, and if you, and I can, you know, get some specific stats, but I, I think off the top of my head, you know, at the start of COVID, we saw checks drop by 50%. I think, um, ATM withdrawals dropped by 70%. And yes, some of it's bounced back. Uh, but but it, it really there, ha there has been a steep decline in in uh, physical payments, uh, whereas on the other hand, uh, online activations shot up and and, um, uh, and you know, e-commerce, as you know, took off. So there is this whole physical to digital shift. Now, saying that, just to be aware, we do not believe uh, the UK will go uh, cashless. We believe there will be a less cash society rather than a cashless society and anybody who needs it, uh, we, we commit, you know, we have committed to, to um, work with the industry and the regulators to ensure that cash is, is there for those who need it. Um, I think the, the other trend coming from 
uh, the, the customer space, both in the consumer space, but also in particular the, the corporate space. And by the way, the, 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 the physical to digital isn't just retail, it's, it's very much in the corporate space as well. Um, the, the, other, uh, the other trend I think is the, this whole better experience. So it's around this digital, it's around real time, uh, and in particular data traveling alongside the payment. And I, and I can touch on this again uh, in a minute, but the, the, uh, the likes of ISO 2082 and the messaging standards and what that can do to corporates. Uh, and it is, uh, I think it, we're just seeing the very start of, of the possibilities in that space. Uh, I think the final thing I would say on the, the customer side, and again, this is, this isn't in the spotlight at the moment, but I do think it will get bigger, is the whole climate agenda, sustainability. You can see the, the, the uh, sort of active investors, you can see people starting to focus on this and expecting their banks and the financial services industry to, to really help them uh, and help the, the, you know, the global situation. So the customer absolutely drives, uh, is driving change. The second big driver is, I believe, is, is around the regulatory and industry space. And I've, you know, I, I remember going to conferences year, five years ago when they said, we see this tidal wave of regulation coming our way. Well, we are absolutely in the middle of that tidal wave of regulation trying to deliver it. And whether that's PSD2 and uh, SCA, so the uh, secure customer authentication, whether it's open banking, which is going into open fi uh, finance, whether it's um, the confirmation of payee and all the fighting, you know, all, everything we're doing to fight fraud, whether it's the Bank of England's real time growth settlement system renewal, um, and, and then, of course, the new payments architecture in the, in the UK. So we're in the we're in the middle of this massive amount of change. Uh, and, and it, but if you trying to drill down in terms of what the regulators and industry are trying to achieve, uh, and by the way, st stop me at any point. As I say, I get very excited about payments, <laughs> but uh, um, the, I, I see it as, uh, as a couple of things. Regulators, I think in the, one of their key drivers is around security uh, and resilience uh, and stability. They, they have to keep, people and payments safe so and, and you you will see that uh, with all the work they are doing on um, uh, fraud app scams that you'll see the the payment systems regulator uh, and actually I, I have some really interesting stats admittedly it wasn't the payments association it was the uh, UK finance but it's really horrifying so over 750 million was stolen through fraud uh, just in the first half of this year, up 30% from last year. Uh, and, and actually to saying that though, the banks uh, and, and the financial services and the industry stopped uh, another 750 million or 730 million. So, uh, but it, it, is, it is, the fraud is rising, um, shooting up. So I think that there's this whole focus on security resilience and obviously the Bank of England with stability is, is um, has a focus there as well. But the regulators also are looking at competition and innovation. And I think this is where, you know, some, some of the things that, that you're, you're focused on. So the uh, ISO 20022, this is a messaging standard, I'm sure you're aware, that uh, is but the regulators are really driving this. So it's really one of the key drivers of the RTGS renewal. It's one of the key drivers of uh, the new payments architecture. Uh, it's one of the key drivers of, of some of the changes going on in Europe. And, uh, and this will enable essentially enhanced data to travel alongside the payment. So it will, will, um, it will enable more efficient cash management e-invoicing uh, it will reduce friction and and I, it will what, what it will be able to do is allow uh, allow organizations to innovate uh, and and I actually as I say I don't think we've seen the start of the potential of what that could deliver because at the moment we're just putting in the rails uh, but we haven't even th thought about what could travel on top of it or or only in, in concept um, I think the other thing around uh, the other area 
uh, in terms of innovation is of course the, the whole digital money piece. Uh, and I actually, I, I attend, um, or I'm the NetWest rep at the UK Finance Digital Money Group. And we just had our first meeting last week. I mean, this is going to be massive. Uh, I, you know, I think the, didn't the Medici's uh, change finance back in the, the 14th century or 15th century? This, this, will, this will change finance for, for the next several hundred years. But I don't think we even understand the concept of, of or I think we potentially understand a concept, but we don't understand how it will, will change financial services. Um, so, so I'm getting. I'm sorry. I'm I'm going on and on. But no, uh, great, carry on. <laughs> is, is this okay? Yeah, so, absolutely. The, okay. Then the final driver uh, is uh, the the way I see it is really around in the competitive space, but driven by technology. So uh, the uh, and and I think I I, I I I said I was talking to somebody the other day. You know, if, if the regulation is a tidal wave. The, the technology is like a big bang. This is, this is hitting now and it's both the FinTech and the big tech. So it's coming, coming from both sides. And um, the, uh, actually so somebody just sent me some, a stat. The FinTech startup community uh, is now valued as a, a third of all banking value. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, it's massive. Uh, and uh, and if you look at the the big techs, I mean, they're launching their own currencies. They're coming in. They've got all the data. This is we've got to look at the the tech. So it's it's um, it's cloud. It's APIs. It's uh, you know, distributed ledger technology. It's open. It's open finance. Their technology is going to change. Uh, be it a huge driver uh, and I think we need to be aware of that and and we're you know in terms of our strategy and our our um particularly for in the corporate space yes we have to change the proposition but we also have to look at how payments uh, you know payments as a service payments as a business how do we actually change from the legacy technology to this new uh distributed uh open using APIs, using cloud technology and build that from where we were to where we need to be to really run payments as it should be run. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So that, that, that was, <laughs> those, are, those are some of the drivers. Um, you know, if, if you were to summarize it into themes, I think it would probably be that there's got to be something around the safety theme, you know, the fraud, cyber, cyber crime, um, AML, there has to be, you know, consumer protections. I think there's also something about the the uh, the speed, the real time, both real time payments, but real time data, and then the, uh, you know, the the smart and the all the great things around APIs, cloud, okay. you know, all the all the tech space. So I think that's that's how I would summarize sort of what's what I see going on in this space. Um, how do you see the emergence of re requests to pay impacting um, corporate efficiencies and, you know, improving things like fund settlement and overall cash flow management, working capital practices? Yeah, that's that's a really interesting question. I um, request to pay is an interesting one, and and actually, I I probably have a slightly different view than than some other people because. You have to look at request to pay, uh, either from request to pay at the technology level, which is sort of the payments level. Yes, it um, we have to do as as one request to pay uh, sort of technology change. But actually, if you look at request to pay in terms of uh, what it offers customers. I always find it difficult to lump them all together because there are so many different use cases, and and uh, so we um, uh, we've just brought out this fantastic and it links to uh, the the essentially uh, the open banking and the pay it model that I can you know that I can talk about, mm -hmm. but um, the so we we do a pay me and again it's it's less of a corporate. Uh, offering but 
but it can be used for, for small and medium enterprise where essentially you, you send a, a QR code uh, or, or a link, which is effect effectively a request to pay. And I can send it to you or a small and medium business could send it to you. And essentially you click on the link or you click on the QR code and then it takes you to your uh, bank and it, uh, it essentially you go through an, a normal um, uh, process and, and it's, it's um, the, essentially it's an alternative to card payments. Uh, and actually the, the, the term we call is, is pay it or pay me, depending on if it's a, if it's a, a corporate, which is pay it or pay me is, is the, the retail equivalent. Uh, and the, um, so, you know, it's 25% cheaper than cards. It's uh, frictionless. It's, uh, it, it's, uh, it reduces fraud. So absolutely, I think this, there is, potential huge potential in this space but i i think it's it's difficult to explain say oh uh request to pay uh, as a whole i think you have to look at the specific use cases is is my particular view mm -hmm. um <laughs> yeah no that's that makes perfect sense um yeah with the move from uh, physical plastic cards to virtual cards, do you see the main benefits of that shift in terms of reducing fraud and the greater spending controls that companies can put in place? Or is it more about the visibility of data and being able to leverage that? So explain exactly what you're after, the the physical, the, the cards, because the card space sits slightly outside our area, but I'm always okay. happy to, to, to talk about anything in payments. No, it could be expanded to um, outside of cards to you know, relate back to the shift to digitization in terms of um, with virtual solutions and um, electronic solutions replacing the, the previous physical um, forms of those payments. Um, is it more to do with companies wanting to have greater control over expenditures and transaction levels, or is it more to do with uh, just overall operational efficiencies um, rather than just specific fraud reduction efforts or, you know, attempts to optimize cash flow overview? Uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to look more broadly because I, I think, um, we're doing a, we're doing a huge amount on um, the, essentially a a, a, merch, a, a merchant proposition, mm -hmm. and I if you if you ask the customers what they want, they they all they all talk about all the things you've just mentioned, whether it's cash flow, whether it's and uh, but do I see it as one specific thing that's going to change it? No, I, I I think it's a whole proposition personally um so i i don't but but may, maybe you're coming at this from a slightly different angle to, to, to the ways i see it because i'm i'm looking at this more from a sort of purely purely payments angle but i see it as a number of factors there's not one thing that is going to solve the the um their issue mm -hmm. it is going to be a combination of so, for example, we um, when we go out to customers, we go out with and, and cor corporates and, and SMEs. We go out with a uh, the pay it proposition. So that's that's a way to pay, and 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 that's that's great. And that, as I say, that that uh, reduces fraud, reduces friction. But we also go out with um, the uh, a product we have called Till, which is a, a merchant acquiring uh proposition and linked to that is uh there's a whole um piece around uh you know next working day settlement simple pricing there's a smart portal on data-led insights so uh if you combine the till with the the pay it with uh iso and and the um you know the data that can come with it if you combine that with the some of the work we're doing cross border uh and and you know the the trade finance and and what what we're doing with sepa and and the global uh the global currencies and global transactions you have to sort of bring it all together 
as one proposition rather than saying, oh, the physical to digital is going to make all the difference. Because I think you have to look at the customer's needs as a whole. But maybe I'm not quite answering your, your question. No, it's quite it's quite a garbled question, but I've definitely okay. got the information that I was asking for. So thank okay. you for that. Um, so looking at open banking that you've touched on, um, obviously most activity has been geared towards the consumer side of things. Um, but what opportunities do you see for open banking for corporates? Yeah, so I, I would go back in this to uh, pay it as an example. So we, as I think I said at the start, we we were the first bank to, to come up with an open banking solution. And I think we're actually quite innovative in this space. And uh, again, I've got a, a stat here. I think uh, so far we've processed a million payments equivalent to 100 million via the open, uh, sorry, 160 million pounds via the open banking APIs. And the pay it solution we've come up with uh, is, is actually multi award winning. Uh, and it's a simple alternative to cards. It's over faster payments rails uh, and it uses the open banking APIs. Uh, and it, uh, as I said, it reduces friction reduces fraud 25% cheaper. So absolutely, I, I see huge potential for, for corporates uh, and, and of, uh, at all, at, of all sizes, actually in particular, I think the SMEs could use this uh, and reduce their you know, card, uh, card uh, costs significantly. And it's very easy. Uh, so I absolutely, I see open banking as a huge opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, what and, and, and saying that, I think then uh, once you get open banking and payments, uh, then open finance is, is a, opens up a whole nother opportunity. But that, that's the next step. And we haven't quite got there yet. Mm -hmm. um, do you see strong customer authentication as um, a barrier that's introducing more friction in terms of payment acceptance? Or is it something oh, that's, oh, the, the, that's joys, the, the joys of strong customer authentication? Um, so payments has always been a balance. There's always the, and, and technology helps sort of move the balance forward, but essentially there's always a balance between uh, speed and simplicity versus um, the, the um, uh, additional data, fraud checks, um, all the other things that, that slow it, slow a payment down. Uh, so strong customer authentication. I, I, it's, uh, I think the issue will be more um, the merchants understanding this and doing it. it it's, it, <sighs> I think technology, there may end up being a way where technology can, can do, can speed things up and still reduce fraud and, uh, and increase the security. At the moment, there is still this balance and this tug of war between the two. Strong customer authentication. I mean, as I, I go back to the fraud and the, the fraud stats in the UK, and I know strong customer authentication came from from uh, PSD2 and we live through that and there on the horizon there will be a PSD3 and we've all got to live through that too. Um, it, there will always be a balance. And I think that, and I think the difficulty is finding the right line. And I'm not, uh, I'm not convinced we in PSD2 that the, uh, EBA and the European Commission found exactly the right line, uh, but I think it's a very hard, hard line to walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, looking at the impact of challenger banks and neo banks in in this space, um, what kind of disruptions do you think they're going to bring to the market, if any, in terms of? the way that banks like yours will operate in the future. Do you see more partnerships becoming a more accepted business model going forward? Partnerships, absolutely. We, we partner uh, 
with with many types of organizations uh, and actually a lot of fintech in particular and paytech uh, because they bring a different sort of skill set and different knowledge and expertise do, do i think uh, i think the challenger banks have been really great because i think it's made the the larger banks look at our own technology and our own estate and say okay we need to we need to be more agile going forward do i think uh, the challenger banks will be the, necessarily the biggest disruptor force i i'm not convinced i think they will they will challenge and they will do some great innovative things uh but if if you ask me for my crystal ball the biggest disruptive challenge coming into the payments industry is from the big tech mm -hmm. the the google apple uh, apples um, you know facebook or meta uh, they are the ones who have the customer base who are global who are rivaling the likes of visa and mastercard they have the digital id piece or they could get it they have um, the the as i say they have the huge customer base they have the data uh, and and they are uh, they are coming in with a huge um, force behind them, and they want they want to take uh, uh, they want to play in this space. And and so, do I think the challenger banks? I, I think I think they will come up with some innovations, but I would absolutely watch out for the big tech. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so looking ahead, what do you see as the biggest opportunities in this space over the next few years? Um, what does the future hold for payments in the UK? Yeah, well, that, that's that's really, I mean, that, that's interesting. So we did, um, uh, we were involved in a piece of work at UK Finance, but I, I know uh, the Payments Association was involved as well. And it was a cross, a cross industry piece of work. And, and uh, my director of payments, Marion King, chaired it, and there were a hundred different participants and and 40, uh, 40 different institutions. And essentially, we looked at you know in the next ten years, so twenty thirty, what would payments look like? Uh, and I, um, so so and, and essentially, it's you know. Pay, people will be able to people and corporates uh, and you know all, and, and actually when I say corporate I also just to be clear I also mean government organizations because we have some um, as I say we bank 750 government agencies and so they're massive uh, uh, massive organizations um, you know they will be able to make payments when they want how they want uh, where they want uh, and in terms of what I think, it, you know, if I, if I was trying to sort of think about this the other day in terms of painting a vision. So I think um, in the future, customers will have confidence because they uh, there will be digital ID, so fraud will be minimised. Um, there will and you'd be able to to confirm the payer and the payee. Uh, they would uh, have you know ISO twenty o two two and and other data sources would mean that they were confident about the decisions they were making. But if there was an issue, they'd be confident in, the, in terms of the protections that they had. Uh, and, and those would be clear as well. I think secondly, the customers would have choice. Uh, and the, the, uh, the choice, not only that the whole physical and digital. So some customers will almost certainly still want to pay by cash, but most, most uh, payments, I believe, will be digital, and not only digital, but there will be a central bank digital currency. There will be stable coins. Digital money will exist, and uh, that will be a whole. As I said, that that has the potential to change financial services uh, for the next few hundred years. So there will be choice, and I think there will be you know clarity and, and certainty. So the data that that travels alongside the payment, and this goes to the point about you know particularly you know huge issue for corporates is around the reconciliation piece and the data and matching things up. There will be certainty and clarity around that. That uh, or or whether you know whether you're sending an international payment, you'll get transparency over where it is, or you will you will get uh, everything will will link together. There'll be smart contracts, uh, and and the payment will just will just happen. So when when the contract is fulfilled, so there will be there will be sort of certainty that that things will will happen in that space. In terms of opportunities uh for us I, I would i would see it at two levels i think there is 
one level, which is as an industry, we have a huge opportunity and we have to work together on certain things. I would go back to the fraud point. This will overtake us if, if we don't work together with regulators. Uh, and I think so we have a huge opportunity to get it right there. Just a, a, a small example of, of something that the industry did was the confirmation of payee work. And I know that's going on to, to phase two. And the, uh, I think, uh, well, and actually to, to be fair, that we, we did a, a massive amount of work in that space as an industry, but then on top of that, we can see directly that that helps our customers. So I mentioned that, that we bank um, the, the government agencies and, and at the start of the, the pandemic, we, um, needed to get or they needed to get universal credit or benefit or payments out to those who needed it and we had ended up um, using and changing adapting our our uh, confirmation of pay um, uh, technology to enable them to to check who they were sending those payments out to and we also increased our faster payments sixfold so so there, there is an opportunity even in the in the in the fraud space I think so that's more in the collaborative space I think in the competitive space, there are also huge opportunities. I've mentioned uh, pay it a number of times in terms of open banking. I can see that the account to account really, uh, you know, it's it's a tiny portion uh, mm -hmm. of, of the payment volumes at the moment, but that will take off. Uh, it, it just needs the right tipping point. Um, I think the for us, you know, we, we have, a, I think we see a lot of opportunity in, in um, because we have a small merchant acquiring proposition, so so there's there's uh, things in that space too. Um, you know, I personally see uh, the this digital money. I think I think it is a um, we have to be thoughtful about how it's done. So this the central bank digital currency, how this how the stablecoin is regulated, the crypto is a difference different story and you know it's i think we're we're more concerned about the fraud in that space uh, rather than anything else but i think there are opportunities in the digital money space as i mentioned programmable money uh, smart contracts uh, we are just at the start of this uh taking off and so uh, and so i i think it's going to be a very exciting uh you know, the next five to 10 years in payments is going to be very exciting. And I look forward to being part of it.